quick break because we are we, we've had a couple of submitters not here so we'll take a quick break after the next submitter until 10 30. so tracy you're welcome to switch your video on how do i do that <laughs> uh, just up on the top of your screen is three little blue dots and uh, if you're using a, a, a Windows uh, system, and you just click Start Video. Okay, got it. Okay. But no worries if you can't. Is that good? There you are. Right. There you are. There you are. Wonderful. <laughs> so look, Tracy, you've got five minutes. Um, uh, you're welcome to use that time to uh, uh, to uh, speak to us, or you're welcome to leave some time for questions. It's entirely over to you how you use your time. Um, but it's over to you and we'll start now. Firstly, female sex protected spaces such as female prisons, female changing rooms, etc., are an established societal norm, backed up through legislation and international agreements. Yet this proposal has consequences which will dismantle those norms without consideration of harm to women, adult human females, or girls, juvenile females in our society. Gender is not the same as sex, where gender expression can change throughout life. Biological sex remains the fact. Sex and gender are confusing enough without being conflated, and the two need immediate clarification within the law. Secondly, I wish to emphasize the issues of overall safety to individuals and the community. An official government document, your birth certificate registers the fact of birth for government purposes. It tracks your life, recording your activities from birth in relation to education, health, marriage, parenthood, taxation, court, justice, corrections, etc., to death. As an official government document, the birth certificate is a baseline for the governance of its citizens. It is the first and most vital of all government documented records of fact for each individual person. As the law currently stands, when the sex marker on your birth certificate is changed, you lose your previous identity and gain a brand new one. This is akin to the court allowing for the establishment of a new identity for a government sanctioned protected person, where no internal trace can identify them to their old identity through official government records. The current legislation adequately allows for a person to change their sex marker on the birth certificate by making application to the family court. Transsexuals I have listened to all say that the family court was not as scary as they thought it would be. The process of changing the sex marker includes presenting evidence that your physical body reflects the sex that you want to align to and, creators, and, and caters for those with a formal diagnosis of gender dysphoria and for those with differences in sex development, DSD, also known as intersex. The family court judge, in belief of good character, then issues a request for a new birth certificate. This birth certificate is not changed as if you were changing your name through a depole or marriage, where a depole overrides the name on your birth certificate as an attachment, proving you have changed your name by showing your new name and all your previous registered names as you progress through life. Instead, the family court judge issues a request for a new birth certificate, and this is really important because the new certificate is given a new internal affairs number that is not connected to the previous birth certificate number in any way, meaning that all the history of previous identity is completely disconnected from the new birth certificate. So let's take a moment to think about this. When you apply for a job, especially say within government, the accepted process is to fill in an application be asked for references of good character and hopefully get an interview where you will probably be asked for a police check, not an unreasonable request in today's society. This reflects the current process, which provides for the genuine presentation before a family court judge with a formal diagnosis and is not an unreasonable expectation given the significance of being granted a completely new identity. So if you have changed your sex marker or as is proposed on SOP 59, a self-identified gender marker, a police check is meaningless. When Internal Affairs issues a new certificate with a new number, it creates a brand new identity. The new birth certificate is not connected to the previous official government records, such as say your criminal record. The government either has one record that tracks you through your life in a continuous way from birth to death with attachments, or there are a series of, of a series of broken official records that make no sense 
and as such create a dysfunctional and broken governance system. So walk with me. Imagine I go in front of a judge and convicted of sexual violation and assault, serve my sentence and gain my freedom. I self-identify as a different gender option as in the proposal, get a brand new identity number and no connection to my previous criminal record, commit the same sexual violation, go in front of the same judge and be judged again as a first time offender or worse, find work with vulnerable youth because police checks cannot make the association between birth certificates, they're different numbers. This makes a mockery of our legal system, the police, judiciary, corrections, and much more. And yes, of course, the criminally minded will take advantage of a get out free card to lose their recorded past. In fact, most will self-identify if it means eliminating all official records on criminal convictions, massive death, debt, or shady past. This cannot be so for a sliding scale of self-identified gender markers on a birth certificate. Biological sex marker must remain to assist with the provision of appropriate government services. And even if a sex marker was not on a birth certificate, a personal declaration of gender self-expression could only ever be an attachment to the original birth certificate statement of fact. Official government documentation must have the ability to account for one person's life as a continuous series of records. Otherwise, our public safety, our government services, justice and human rights mean nothing. I object to the supplementary order, paper 59. Uh, thank you, Tracy. Do we have any questions from members of the committee? Uh, Nicola has a question for you. I do have a brief question. Um, Tracy, it's a really interesting point you raise around the internal affairs number of a new birth certificate, but I, I'm just a bit hesitant to go down the path of sexual offending, but are there, because I, I just don't, I, I want to talk about um, other more general scenarios. Are there other more general scenarios whereby uh, having a new internal affairs number may be impactful on society? Well, tax, for instance, how would you keep a record of a continuous tax process if I had a great debt, a student debt, if I had tens of thousands of dollars owed as a student, it would be eliminated. Every government official document that my previous birth certificate would be gone. You can't have two birth certificates. So creating a new one, completely dissociates you from the first certificate. So whatever I did, my debt, my tax, my criminal record would disappear in an official government record. And it would be no ability for that to be raised in court, for instance, in the future. Okay. Do you have a, a proposed solution as to how people who wish to change their gender might be able to change a sex marker on. No, I think it's the same thing too. You cannot change, you can identify your gender, but you cannot change your sex. You can either not have a sex marker on a birth certificate or a sex marker because this is a biological fact. If you identify with a gender, that is uh, a declaration as in a change of name certificate, which should be an attachment to the original birth certificate. Okay, so that's my question. I don't want to discuss the conflation of gender and sex. I understand that argument, but I'm asking um, how people who wish to change their sex might... There's already want... current process that is very valid within the family court. It's appropriate to stay in the family court because it's a court process and they have information to all official government documents. If you take it out of the hand of the court and give it to someone who doesn't have access to those records, then, then you are making a big mistake. So the family court has court records of you as a person. And so there it's appropriate to, to remain what, as it is if you really want to change your sex marker to go in front of a judge, be witness to good character, particularly, and this is the assessment, as well as medical evidence that your body aligns with the um, sex you are now identifying with either gender dysphoria or DSD. The, adequate, the law is adequate as it stands. A lot of um, trans people have uh, given evidence uh, during this hearing that they can't afford to go through a gender reassignment surgery. So do you think it is fair that you can only change your sex market if you've had the reassignment surgery? 
No, I don't. I think a diagnosis of gender dysphoria is needed. Anyone can get plastic surgery. That's not a big issue at all. But if you have to... Well, it is. It is. Mm -hmm. It is a big issue. It, it, well, it's commercial. Everyone can get gender... Uh, it, to get plastic surgery if they want but if you have a diagnosis of gender dysphoria that is different that's a clinical and medical model on which the court can establish the validity of why you wish to change your sex marker otherwise it's plastic surgery DISD is the same you've got the valid medical evidence to say that there was confusion possibly um, at the point of recognition of birth um, and now we are correcting that those two instances are well catered for otherwise everybody else is it's subject to their feeling it's their feeling it's not their biological sex all so, right thanks tracy we have gone quite a bit over time so um we will need to um bring in the next person but thank you and you're welcome, you're welcome to stay on